Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and in this Lightboard lesson video, we're going to talk about cloud native architecture and specifically how it relates to 5G technology. So everyone's heard, of, heard about 5G, it's awesome. You get more bandwidth, you get more speed, there's a better user experience, there's ultra low latency, um, and so there's all these great things that come with 5G. And service providers specifically are enabling their large customers with the, with the capabilities, with this promise of 5G. But in, but in order to do that, they need to look at having a common architecture defined from the core of their network all the way out to the far edge of their network. Uh, and that common architecture is going to allow for faster deployments, greater efficiencies, uh, reduced operational costs, so a lot of benefits to that. And the success of 5G capabilities um, with respect to that common architecture really starts with the infrastructure itself. And the infrastructure needs to be cloud native container based infrastructure. This is going to support the service based architectures that are defined in the specifications for 5G, right? Uh, so what service providers want to be able to do is deliver individual capabilities as separate services uh, and in order to do that, you need to go to the cloud. That's offered in the cloud, so you've got to move to cloud native architectures in order to achieve that. Um, and so just to give you kind of a quick uh, outline of maybe the way it would be you know, prior to uh, you know, individual separate services, uh, you, would, you used to you know, have an app, and I'll just put an app right here, like a legacy monolithic app, let's say, and I'll just put a big box around this guy. And all the networking and storage and compute and all that stuff is, is all contained within that application. But now as we move to a, uh, a service-based architecture uh, or microservices, you've got several services defined here. And I'll just put a few of these up here. And then they sit on uh, shared. I'm going to put, you know, storage down here and, uh, you know, compute power down here and networking. All of that is defined down here, and then they, you know, that, that's all used for all of these services, right? They, they, uh, they, they share that. But then there's also this virtualization layer that sits here uh, to orchestrate all of this stuff, right? And so, um, so that's so now when you talk about you know scaling out one of your services, um, then you can do that here in this service-based architecture or in a microservices. Uh, you know, capability, you can scale out the service individually rather than scaling out the entire application, like the entire virtual machine. Um, so really what ends up happening here is that network functions are decomposed, as it were, into separate services, right? Okay, so the, uh, the, the need is out there to move to a cloud native, to a container-based environment, um, and the, frankly, the, the core networks for 5G are intended to be cloud native and deployed as microservices in this, container, in this containerized infrastructure, uh, just like modern IT web applications are deployed. And for a containerized infrastructure, the, the de facto, the industry de facto is Kubernetes. So I'm gonna put Kubernetes here, right? And Kubernetes is awesome. Uh, but it, but it's, it also has some, uh, you know, some, some drawbacks, some limitations, as it were, when it comes to service provider and 5G, right? Kubernetes was, de was designed for web applications, for HTTP protocols, HTTP, HTTPS, right? Uh, but service providers need more than that. They need things like diameter protocol. They need uh, session initiation protocol or SIP protocol, among others. Um, to do what they do, right? And Kubernetes was not really designed for that. Uh, Kubernetes has limited egress capabilities. Um, there's a lack of security controls with Kubernetes. There's a lack of visibility and revenue control capability with Kubernetes. Uh, there's no redirection for multi-cloud environments with Kubernetes. And so F5 has uh, put together a solution that will solve the problems of the, the shortcomings or the, you know, the shortfalls, I guess, of Kubernetes in this specific environment, um, but still be able to deliver the promise of, uh, of 5G. And uh, the solution involves a couple of key components. One is a service proxy, and the other is a service mesh. So we're gonna kind of dive into a Kubernetes cluster now, and I'm gonna kind of show you how all this stuff works. So uh, here I'm gonna put, um, Kubernetes 
Kubernetes cluster. And we're just gonna draw this out really quick. So I'm gonna put kind of a big, a big box here um, in this Kubernetes cluster. Okay, within the Kubernetes cluster, you have these, these um, uh, cloud network functions is what I'm just gonna call them, CNFs. And these, there's a lot that goes into these things, but I'm just gen generally gonna call them uh, cloud network functions. So you have these defined here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put four of them just as a uh, representation. So CNF. Um, so we've got four of these things to find. Okay, so within the cluster, you have these cloud um, cloud native network functions, right? Um, and then out here, you may have a um, you know a, a, a cloud native uh, VRAN, this radio access network. And let's just put a little cloud on that. And then and then you may also have a you know some other data center out here that's cloud native, and that traffic is is coming into your Kubernetes cluster, right, in this uh, containerized environment. And so um, F5 offers what's called a service proxy for Kubernetes. So I'm going to put service proxy right here. Um, and then I'm going to put the word or the initials SPK, service proxy for Kubernetes. And that's defined right here. So this is the, you know, F5 SPK. And the F5 service proxy for Kubernetes uh, does several things with respect to control and security and visibility. Uh, so from a control perspective, the traffic that comes in here is, uh, is going to be, uh, you know, uh, is going to use several different protocols uh, like diameter and HTTP and SIP and SCTP and all kinds of different stuff, right? And like I said, Kubernetes was built on web applications, so it's HTTP. So from a traffic control perspective, the service proxy for Kubernetes does things like layer four, layer seven load balancing. It does dynamic routing. Uh, you can do rate limiting. And this right here is also very critical for a service provider when you're talking about uh, 4G transition to 5G, right? So you can't just flip the switch to 5G overnight, right? It's not just a, just not, not just a quick thing. So, um, so the fact that the service proxy for Kubernetes is going to be able to handle all of those different protocols is absolutely critical as you transition from 4G to 5G. From a security perspective here, it does uh, firewall signaling or signaling for firewall. Um, from a visibility perspective, there's, uh, there's statistics and analytics that can be pulled out of here. There's revenue assurance uh, that you can have you know, from as you transition from 4 to 5G. Um, so the service proxy for Kubernetes sits here as the traffic enters the Kubernetes cluster, enters, exits the Kubernetes cluster. But now that we're in the cluster itself, right, this is where the service mesh comes in. And specifically, I'm going to put Aspen mesh, right? And I'm going to put Aspen mesh here as well. So Aspen mesh is going to handle the, uh, the control and the security and the visibility within the clusters among the, the CNFs right here. So this is that east-west traffic, right? And so the visibility of east-west traffic is achieved with uh, Aspen Mesh. And in fact, I'm gonna put a CG right here because it's at specifically carrier grade Aspen Mesh, right? So it's a CG, carrier grade Aspen Mesh. And so, uh, the carry grade Aspen Mesh gives you the visibility of this east-west traffic. From a security perspective, um, there's policy management functionality that's here in Aspen Mesh, but also mutual TLS is available. And so all of the traffic among the CNFs here can be encrypted, which is critical. Um, from a visibility perspective, you can, you can uh, draw out um, layer seven metrics. You can do logs and tracing uh, here with carry grade Aspen Mesh. And then also you can do packet captures for troubleshooting. Um, also, if you need to do some kind of lawful intercept, this, uh, that'll, this allows for that as well. So within the cluster itself, you can use carrier grade Aspen Mesh to achieve that control and security and visibility. And then at the service proxy um, you know, layer or level, uh, you can also achieve that control and security and visibility with service proxy for Kubernetes, right? So these two things can be used together, of course, or they can be used independently. You don't have to have one without the other, but like I said, you can, you can certainly use them both together. So with all of this, F5 provides the control and the security and the visibility for service providers who want to deploy 
a cloud native infrastructure that will be used for 5G technology. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.